Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Craig's Corner. Carmine Vitrano with you, and alongside me is New York Bobcats general manager and head coach Craig Doremus. And, Craig, you know, big uh, last weekend for you, if you guys would, a home weekend. The Bobcats uh, faced off against the Philadelphia Revolution and the Philadelphia Little Flyers. I know we were able to talk about that uh, on the broadcast. But, you know, let's just talk about that Philadelphia game, uh, the Revolution game. It was physical. I mean, it got physical pretty much from the drop of the puck to the end uh, to the end of the game. And, you know, you guys were able to come out with the victory. But, you know, just take us through your mindset of that one, especially when it was just getting, you know, pretty, pretty much chippy, you know, throughout the game. Definitely a chippy game that, that unfortunately wasn't much about hockey and more about the physical play and whatnot. But we were happy about guys to be able to pers persevere and get the two points. Philadelphia's goaltender played very well. Felt that we controlled the tempo and the pace of the game for the most part. But the game was closer than it should have been based on the play of their goaltender. Uh, again, they, they ran around and, and got really physical with our guys. And I'm, I'm proud of the way we composed ourselves and able to get some power plays out of it and take advantage of them and ultimately come away with the two points. Didn't get easier, though, the next day. You guys were obviously banged up, as you were saying, you know, from that physical game with the Revolution. The Philadelphia Little Flyers come in, best team in the EHL. And you guys were able to jump out to a 2 nothing lead, and then next you know it just seemed like, you know, the foot came off the pedal a little bit, and then the Little Flyers were able to control, you know, uh, to control that game and come away with the two points. But it just kind of seemed like a little bit of high, a little bit of low during that one. Yeah, ultimately, we were happy with the team's effort. We were shorthanded from some suspension, some in-house disciplinary issues that we had to address as a team that day. So um, disappointed with the outcome, but definitely not disappointed in the, uh, the hard work from the group and the effort they put forth. Thought they played well, like you said, got off to a two-goal lead. And then ultimately, I think what happened was we just ran out of gas in the third period, two games in two days. Um, and our group just fell short, but happy with the effort. I think we took some stuff from the team, from the game, both good and bad, and we'll use it moving forward. Your club just wrapped up another showcase here in the EHL, the January showcase, and uh, three games that were on the schedule for you guys, and you were able to jump out and get two uh, wins, outscoring you know your opponents. I believe it was 10 to three against Valley and Boston Junior Rangers. And you know, before we get into that third game against New Hampshire, just you know, what did you see coming off that Philadelphia Little Flyer loss, and you know, rebounding with two big wins? We just wanted again to emphasize that every game is a two-point game, and we want to go into the weekend approaching like that. Now, I'll. I'll Focus coming out of the week of practice was get the two points from Valley, and I think our team did a good job, like you said, against them and the Boston Junior Rangers. Jumped out ahead of both teams early and often. Uh, unfortunately, had a little lapse there at the end versus the Junior Rangers. They gave up two late goals that we weren't too happy about. Coach Bobby DeRico and I addressed it with the team and, and want to make sure that we make a concerted effort to eliminate that moving forward. Um, but happy with the effort. Again, two big points on uh, Saturday and Sunday, and it set us up well going into Monday against the Monarchs. Yeah, to just take us through that game, the Monarchs, it just seemed like it was it was close for a bit, you know, following it, and then all of a sudden, you know, again, just kind of like the little flyers, the Monarchs were able to, you know, control that one and, and run away with that game. Just, you know, where do you see the Bobcats right now, you know, measured up to the teams like the New Hampshire Junior Monarchs and, and the Philadelphia Little Flyers? I think the biggest thing is there's not much of a difference. It's a little difference between us and some of those uh, better teams right now. Uh, we have to correct some things. We've made some mental lapses in the game, some brain farts as we like to refer to it, and they've capitalized when we haven't been able to capitalize on their mistakes. Uh, I don't even view it as a 5-1 uh, game. It was 4-1. They got an empty netter at the buzzer. And it was a 2-1 game at the half. We had our chances to tie it early in the second half. We didn't capitalize, and they did. They had a couple of great opportunities from right in front of our net, and they were able to bury them. Uh, a big stat for us at the end of the game was the shots on net. It was 22 shots on net each team, so that shows the game was much more even than the score indicates. And we believe come playoff time we'll be ready to play with them and anyone else in our league. Well, individually, two players had a chance to showcase their skills. Uh, Carlos Ross and C.J. Tatilla at the 94 uh, uncommitted game, you know, here in the EHL. And they were able to, you know, again, just showcase their talents in front of some college scouts. And, uh, you know, just, again, what did you hear from them? And, and, you know, what was your thought about their play? First of all, I'm just proud of those guys being selected to play in the game. It's a credit to them and the hard work they have and the discipline. They've kept moving forward, tried to get into a college. Um, I think both of them will be very happy with their college decisions when they eventually make it. They'll have a lot of good choices, a lot of tough choices to make, but good ones. Um, I was happy for both of them. They both played well. Bobby and I watched the game in the office. I think Carlos finished with three points. He was a plus five on the day, and I think CJ finished with two points in a losing effort. But they both played well. I thought they showed well on camera, at least from what we watched and from the college I spoke to. They were happy with both of their performances. Well, big week for you guys, an outdoor game coming against the New York Applecorn. I know you guys were able to practice outside here at the Twin Rings uh, on the pond, as they call it. And, you know, you guys were able to do it last year. And I know it was, you know, a big buzz, especially, you know, with the stadium series going around. You had the Rangers and Islanders and Devils all participating in it. And now uh, you guys in Applecorn are continuing it here in th uh, this year. Um, 
Yeah, you know, just take us through it. I mean, maybe for the first timers, you know, within the Bobcats organization that didn't go through it last year, maybe, you know, for the veterans like uh, Corey Kennedy, Carlos Ross that did it last year, Lucas Brown as well. Um, you know, just what, what's the mood, what's the atmosphere in the locker room right now? I think it's important when you talk about that special event that we want to thank the New York Apple Corps for inviting us to be a part of it for the second year in a row. It is a nice experience for the guys. Um, some of the veterans have talked to some of the new guys about what it was like last year playing up there in Brewster in the game. Unfortunately, we came out on the losing end, so that's also been kind of a focal point in the dressing room this week is we want to make sure that we enjoy the novelty experience, but we get the two points. Getting to skate outdoors this morning was a good experience for the guys. And again, we spoke about let's get over the novelty and the fun of it. I think practice was good for that the first 10, 15 minutes practice. We just were kind of loose, let the guys shoot around, have some fun before we got to work. And it was good to get outside. Our goalie skated outdoors yesterday. They get used to playing with the glare and the sun in their eyes. So that was important. And I think a lot of chatter has been focused on let's get in the two points, get back on track, get back on the horse, get back to the winning ways. And, and any time you play Apple Court, it's a fun game. We know it's, gonna be, it's a rivalry game. It's going to be tight. It's going to be physical. You can throw the standings out whenever we play them. Um, and it's important that now we're side and tied in the season series, one game apiece. We want to get that, the lead 2-1 going into the fourth, the final game. All right. Thanks for your time. Best of luck. Thank you very much. All right, fans, don't forget, for all your New York Bobcats information, go to nybobcats.com. And to watch the Bobcats live, head over to fasthockey.com.